Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerry Jones, and I am president and CEO of Mega International. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk a little bit about today about developmental office training. Um, I also want to give a shout out there and talk to some of the people that I had an opportunity to spend some time with this weekend. And I want to thank you for being able to watch this program. And please take down notes and any questions that you have that I have not answered. Please get back to me as expeditiously as possible so that I may be able to give you the answers that you're looking for. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the developmental officer. But I also want to give a shout out there to my, my schoolmate, good friend, and his program that he's been working with for the last 40 years. Al, I, <clears throat> this is to Al Carruthers. Uh, out there in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, Al, I wanted to say that I am delighted to have you being a part of the community that you've been working in for the last 45 or 50 years, working with a lot of the underprivileged youth, the disadvantaged, the disenfranchised, and a lot of the youth that did not have the opportunity if it had not been for you giving them guidance in the right direction. And I felt really good that Al's House of Styles there in South Bend has been there as a, as a cornerstone for the last 50 years to bring people together to show them various things that he's did. And my hats is off to Larry, I mean to Al, because Al and I went to school at Washington High School back in the day and, and he was one of my mentors and somebody that I looked up to greatly and I really appreciate him at this late date 40, 40 years later that he's still helping the young people in the community and they named the street Al Carruthers, Al Carruthers and that was through the council, city council and the mayor's office and all the people that gave him accolades for the time that he's put there and the time that he's helped with these youth. <clears throat> My understanding is that I would like for you to be able to get that 501c3 nonprofit status and that way that you'll be able to go with the Chamber of Commerce and all the different corporations that are there, Bendix Aviation Corporation, Wheeler Brader Fry, Miles Laboratory, and several other ones that are still left as monuments there in the community that can help give you donations in order to help you with computers, help you with educational programs, scholarship programs for the disadvantaged youth and the underprivileged people that you've already helped so many of. But now that you've got this opportunity and you've been acknowledged by so many people that want to help you get the 501c3 so that they can donate money to your organization so that you can be able to get they can get a tax write-off and they can help you with the programs that you're helping in with those young kids and my hats is off to you Al I can't say enough that I thank God for being able to have had you in my life and I give God all the credit for what he's done in my life and I just want you to realize that you know, your work wasn't in vain it was definitely seen to by several people including <clears throat> people like myself that I'm looking back 40 years later and thinking wow you know this guy was something you know he uh, helped me through a lot and and doing your football career and all all the accolades that you got from school but you stayed there and you found your passion with the young people and I'm delighted that I have this opportunity to bring this on the program today just to say thank you this, my name is Jerry Jones, and I am President and CEO of Mega International. President and CEO of Mega International. We are a grant writing corporation, and we set up uh, a lot of the 501c3 corporations for people so that they can get their corporation off the ground and get funded. <coughs> Today, we want to talk a little bit about developmental officer, and developmental officer is is somebody that's either on your staff or either subcontracted from the outside. And most of you don't have any knowledgeable about the developmental officer. Well, a developmental officer is the same as a fundraising officer. And a fundraising officer is a person that goes out and secures funds for your organization, depending just as no more than a purchasing agent would be to a corporation. A developmental officer is to the nonprofit as the purchasing agent is to a corporation. So you can call him fundraising officer or developmental officer. I like to use the term develop because they're developing non-monetary grants and monetary grants to help you in your tenure of business to be able to get grants. Now, a lot of people are not privy to know 
that without having a good developmental officer, you're not going to be able to go after various funds. We're not going to look for no one grant application here. We're looking for many different grants that's going to be able to help you to be able to set your goals on the type of monies you're looking to get and make it happen for yourself. In 90 days after you start your quest to require funding, you should be already starting to have funds pouring in but you have to get that 501c3 first. And the 501c3 is, is three executive documents that you have to get. One is with the Secretary of State, which incorporates you in that state as a nonprofit corporation. The second one is the Franchise Tax Board, that you be tax exempt in your state. And the third is the IRS. And the IRS gives you a tax exempt status indicating that you've been approved by the Secretary of State, the Franchise Tax Board, and you get a tax exempt status from the IRS indicating that you're tax exempt and you don't pay any taxes and all funds and all money for your charitable organization is donated and there is no no paying the money back. It's all for bequest legacy and anything that you want to do, whether it be monetary are non-monetary. It is mandatory that you have the 501c3 first before you're going to look for grants. Grants are going to be available a long time, but when I started in this business, there was less than a half a million people that had 501c3s. Now I look and I check with the same statistical data that I did back then, 14 million people have 501c3s. And I find that low income, African Americans, and some are on the low totem pole of getting these 501c3s. You've got people out there getting all kind of 501c3s for all different types of things, and they're getting monies. But the point of a lot of us, we're not privy to the educational factor of what it takes to get it, and we don't have anybody that can show us the way. I hope that my programs that I put on has given you an educational opportunity to see a difference, that you can make a difference for yourself. It seemed like it's a lot complicated. It, in some avenues, it, it probably has a lot more to do with the documentation and paperwork and doing the proper nomenclature of information that you need in order to get this done. But I'm saying to you, if you're serious about changing, helping people in the community, changing your life, and being able to help other lives to be changed, get the 501c3 and and then get you a good developmental officer either on your staff or either subcontracted from the outside that can help you to be able to bring in the type of funds that you want to that you want to portray in your in your nonprofit corporation now i say if you are looking <clears throat> and this is just hypothetical this is not an actual but say you're looking to get eight hundred twenty thousand dollars uh, in terms of funds to run your organization, depending on the size of the organization, and you want to be able to do it. I, I think that at that point, you get a good developmental officer that comes in and start making phone calls at 8 o'clock, and they get off at 5 like a regular job, you will be able to bring your funds in within no matter, no less than 90 days if you work hard at it. Now, I can tell you unequivocally, most of the nonprofit developmental officers that work for companies, they make $80,000 a year, $80,000 a year. So once you start off working with that developmental officer and they start bringing in the funds for you, whether it be corporations, funding foundations, government, state, and any other entity that they bring the money through, now you got an opportunity to put this money into your account and fix the 60-40 rule with 60% to lessen the burden of government, 40 for administrative services. So every time you get $100,000, keep it in mind, 60 for lessening the burden of government, helping the people in the community, 40 for administrative services. They realize that you have to have a business. They realize that you have to have telephone. They realize that you have to have workers and all the other stuff. So don't give yourself more than the money that you're taking in. You're there to help the people lessen the burden of government in the community and you get monetary and non-monetary. Monetary is anything <clears throat> to do with cash. Non-monetary non is anything with gifts, in-kinds, and anything that they can give you in terms of cars, clothes, books, shoes, a lot of different uh, food, clothing, all that, that's non-monetary. Now, you can get non-monetary and you can get uh, monetary. You know, you can get both, but my, my objective is this. If you are setting your goals and getting a nonprofit corporation and you know how much money you're looking to do annually, 
then you need to get a good developmental officer that's going to make those phone calls repetitively, have your uh, grant put together electronically, so every time you're talking to different people, you can send that electronic grant right out to them and get back and forth and follow up. I mean, they're doing it every day, and I can't see why they can't see that this is the way to go. If you're going to get on the phone, you're going to get on there with General Motors Corporation, and you want to find out who's in charge, this is your first, <clears throat> this is your first thing you want to ask. When you dial the phone number or either you look it up, either it's online or you're looking up the phone number. Personally, I like the phone. You may like doing it uh, online or with the internet. That's fine, you know, but I like that one-on-one -on -one contact. And then the first thing you want to do is get on the phone and you want to say, who's in charge of your corporate givings? Who's in charge of your corporate givings? And if you want to be a little bit more educated, you say, who's in charge of your philanthropists? And she says, well, I don't understand. Well, just say, well, who's in charge of your corporate giving? Now, when she tells you that information, you got about a 30-second window. She tells you the name of the person that's in charge of the corporate giving. You write it down, get it spelled correctly, and then find out as much from that receptionist as you possibly can about who's in charge of their uh, who's the controller of the company, who's in charge of corporate giving, and who is the president of that company. Those are the three main things you always want to find out. Who is the president of the company, who is the controller of the company who is in charge of finance, and who is in charge of corporate givings. Now the person usually in, in, in corporate givings is not necessarily the person that's the head of the organization, but they have a job to do just like anybody. Everybody has a chain of command so they report to somebody. So what I would suggest, once you know who the president of the company is, their annual report, how much money they've been giving out each year, then you can talk intelligently to that. Uh, that uh, person that's going to be able to, who, the person that's in charge of corporate givings that's going to be giving you the funds. You're going to say, you know, we found out General Motors Corporation gave out $72, billion, $72 million last year, and we found out that they gave it out to various programs and everything else looking at your annual report. Well, she realizes two things now, that you know who the president is, she, you know what their annual report is, and they know that you know that they're giving out money. Now, what you want to know is how can I get a board to get some of these funds that you're giving out to other people? I have a 501c3, I'm waiting to do some grants, and a lot of people think this, and they always say this, well, we're just starting out, we're a grassroots program. Well, I mean, you know, it takes just as much effort to do one as to do the other. Now, if you want to continue conti continue to say that you're a grassroots program, that's on you. You can wash cars, you can have chicken dinners, you can uh, murder pigs and do all that all year you want. But then there's a lady across the street that calls up McDonald's and tells McDonald's she wants some soccer uniforms and, and it's eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000, she gets that. You'll be on the phone for the next 10 weeks just to get $700. See, I, don't, I figure it's just as much an effort to do one as to do the other. So all I'm saying to you unequivocally, start setting your goals and objective to realistic things that you can make happen in the community. I've been in this business for 17 years. I've seen all type of people. I've had over 8,501 C3s that we've been able to help people ascertain. We raised over $550 million in grants on an annual basis, and we've seen all type of situation from domestic violence, senior citizen, at-risk youth, after-school mentoring program, conflict resolution, anger management, and several of the uh, teen pregnancy program, and a lot of the food and shelter program that we've been able to be familiar with. All I can tell you this is that if you don't call, we can't help you. Give us a call at area code 310-337-1169. My name is Jerry Jones, and I am president and CEO of Mega International. I would love to work with you. I don't have all the answers. We have a 78% success ratio on the grants that we write. We don't get 100%, and nobody does but I'm willing to do what we have the expertise to do to help you with your tenure business so you can move forward and get on with it. I find that a lot of people, a lot of people have a 501c3 stuck up in their drawers. They have them, they went after one grant application and they don't use it anymore. There's a lot of people that have been waiting a year and a half, six, uh, 
year and a half to get grants and they haven't gotten a grant plus they haven't even gotten a 501c3 and you have a 501c3 and you're not doing anything with it so as what the IRS is going to say is that you weren't going to do anything with it anyway because you didn't use it at all and that's why after three years they turn around and uh, you have to get them revoked and then you want to get them reinstated so you can do something with it later on you got it now utilize it I mean and there's nothing coming to a sleeper but a dream now if you want to dream keep sleeping that's exactly what you're going to get but if you want to do some action action cures fears take that action and cure those fears that you got and make it happen for yourself the opportunity is there I want to tell you a little bit about this God is the head of my life has always been the head of my life I've been through trials and tribulation and God has always brought me out this was not one of the positions I was working to have being a nonprofit grant writer setting up nonprofit corporate that was not what I wanted to do and God knew that wasn't but he knew I would be the best at it and now we're number two in the nation in terms of writing these grants and doing all these things but it was because of the will that I followed what God wanted me to do rather than I follow what I wanted to do so I say he you know he blesses you all the time and I hope that these programs that I've been bringing to you on these programs have been a blessing to you that can help you advantageous so that you can be able to do some things for yourself and quit talking about it and be about it. My name is Jerry Jones and I am president and CEO of Mega International and I look forward to working with you. Now one of the things once you put your 501c3 together you want to be able to put all of your board members you know who's going to be the president, who's going to be the chief financial officer or the CFO, who's going to be the secretary, who's going to be the developmental officer and who's going to be the director. Now at that point you can subcontract your director, your developmental officer from the outside or you can be the develop, developmental and learn to train yourself to go after those funds. I mean there's no problem but once you uh, submit that 501c3 everybody has to be independent and, there, and anybody that's on that board if it's husband and wife that's on that board on, out of the five people in it, then you add more people. You can have up to 21 people on your board of directors. And that's mandatory because the government allows you that, volunteer or non-volunteer. All I'm saying to you is don't talk about it, be about it. Let's do this. You know, you've been talking long enough, and I find that a lot of the low-income African-American people want to do something or other, but they don't have the funds, they're scared to take the chance, and now is the time. You can see me on here and you'll say oh yeah well he talks good no it's not about me you don't have to use Jerry Jones at all but you need to do something for yourself to make a change in your life and make a change in the people around you we can't keep on hollering about this is bad or that's bad but what are you doing about it to make the change that's all I'm saying so all I'm telling you is today I want to see you start looking at a good developmental officer making those phone calls utilizing the time that you have in order to be able to get back to these vendors and and see what they can do for you if you don't call they can't help you they don't know that you even exist so it would a developmental officer that can make these numerous phone calls for you get back to them with what they're giving out whether it be non-monetary or monetary you got world vision you got several other companies you got Dell computer you got IBM all these people are giving away stuff all the time but you're not getting it why because you're not asking you don't know that they even exist. Have you checked with the Chamber of Commerce in your local neighborhood to find out how many of the corporations belong to the chambers? And how many of those corporations that the Chamber has? 500 or 1,000 corporations that can get a sponsorship letter from you to donate to your cause? Create, do creative financing. Do creative uh, awareness of your business so you can make your business grow. If you don't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. And that's what I'm saying to you now. You have these great opportunities to make a change in your life, and you got the 501c3 that they can donate monies to your program. And if you're not working, you don't have a job, then why not use these skills to be able to benefit you and help these skills to help others? You can also do a lot of subcontract work. Subcontract work is consisting of you being able to bring in somebody with the expertise to help you to train certain other people that you're not privy to. Okay? Now let me run that by you again. A subcontract person is a person that comes in that has a certain type of skill that they can train other people that you're not privy to. But remember, those subcontract people goes through your 501c3s. All the, if I, if I, oh, let's, I'm going to use an example here. Okay, I'm a truck driver. I'm a truck driver. And by being a truck driver, 
I have skills that I went to a school, a nonprofit school, and that school allowed me, allowed me to be able to be, to get my license, my CDL license. Well, now I know exactly what's required of that because then, now if I bring in a subcontractor, one of the teachers or the educators from the school to be able to teach these kids how to get their CDL license, well, they're still going through my nonprofit corporation all the grant money still coming through my organization. Now I pay that subcontract teacher a certain salary to teach these kids how to get their license, but that's still my company. So all I'm saying to you, you don't have to have the expertise. You have to know how to delegate your authority to your subordinates and let them work for you and get the job done. And then you subcontract those people that you bring in and pay them a salary or pay them whatever out of the grant money. Now the opportunity has been there for you and it's going to be there for you, but if you don't do anything with it, it's not worth talking about. You have a 501c3, and you have an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of numerous of youth, senior citizens, at-risk youth programs, mentoring, tutoring, after-school enrichment program, adult education, anger management, conflict resolution, job training, shelter, homeless, veterans, number of opportunities that you have that are unlimited but you can't do anything until you follow the protocol of getting the proper documentation and government document, state, guy, state documentation that you need in order to make this work. My name is Jerry Jones and I am President and CEO of Mega International and I look forward to working with your organization. I want to be able to help you with the questions, write down your questions and answers so we can be able to talk to you expeditiously about getting these things. Grants are coming down every day. Another thing I want you to do on a repetitive basis and do it daily and let's go to the C, write this down, get your pen. I want you to go to CFDA, CFDA. It's called the Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance. Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance. That's why I want, it's going to take you a couple of hours to train in there and learn and do it, but just take your time and just go through the different uh, organizations in the Board of Education, uh, Department of Justice, Department of Agriculture, Department of Health and Human Services, and Department of Justice. And all these people are giving out grants. And you need to see what are these grants that are in there that are applicable for your particular application. Now that's just through the government. Now you got a lot of foundations. You got all, you got over 10,000 foundations. You got the John D. Rockefeller. You got Melinda Gates, found Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You got a lot of foundations that you can go to, Betty Ford Foundation you can go to and ask them for funding for your organization. And that you may, you may be able to get funds from any one of those or you get, maybe get from the state program. Then you got private philanthropy like the president of UPS or the president of FedEx or the president of Bank of America or the president of Wells Fargo or the president of Chrysler Corporation. They have to pay and give out money as well so they're looking to get a tax write-off. So how do you know they're not going to be able to help you? But if you don't call, they can't help. So all I'm saying to you, stop thinking small and start thinking big. You have the opportunity to be whatever you want to be. Now, if you don't take that opportunity, it's not because it wasn't offered, it's because you didn't want to do it. You know, n nothing's coming to a sleeper but a dream, as I've said before, and if that's you want to keep on dreaming, just keep on sleeping, you'll keep on dreaming, and that's all, when you wake up, that's all it's going to be is a dream. But action cures fears. Action cures fears. Anytime you got a fear of anything, I don't care what it is, do some action behind it, the fear got to go. Action always cures fears. And, uh, and just keep that in mind, I don't care what it is. Bills that you owe and you got light bills, gas bill, and you think it's going to get cut off, call the people up and tell them, look, I ain't got the money today, this is what I'm going to be able to do, and blah, blah, blah. It's going to make you feel better anyway. You know, don't be letting these fears do it. You know, faith and fear don't mix. You know, faith is false evidence appearing real. You know, so our faith, fear is false evidence appearing real. Faith is totally in your behalf to be able to be whatever God said. He said he would give you the desires of your heart. All you had to do was do what? Believe. And that's in Mark 11:22. So if you look at Mark 11:22, those are your keys. Use those keys wisely because he said that heaven and earth would pass, but his word was going to stand. So all I'm saying to you is if you believe God and you believe that this is for what you're going to do and being able to do what you've never been able to do, step out on faith and, see, and try God and see if he won't help you. 
I know. I've been there. I mean, I was at the bottom of the barrel, and I seen God bring me all the way back up. And when I was, you know, after I lost my parents, I didn't even want to live. I hoped that, you know, I asked God, I said, Lord, listen, if you, my parents go, please take me first. And that didn't happen. But after it happened, and I was still here, then I, need, I, I knew he had a purpose for me in this world to help other people. And that's what I tried to extenuate myself to do. So all I'm saying to you is that if I can help you in any kind of way, then we'll turn around and do what we need to do in order to make this happen for you. Please give us a call as expeditiously as possible. Area code is 310-337-1169. And again, my hat's, off, my hat's off out there to Al Carruthers. Al Carruthers is out there in South Bend, Indiana, helping those youth. And I want to say hello to Pastor Bishop James Brock out there in Austin, Texas. I, uh, also, Linda Woodard out there doing the child care development in Austin, Texas, and uh, we're doing a lot of stuff out there with Felicia Skipper in Chicago, and a lot of things that we're doing here in L.A. with a lot of the different programs we're doing here as well. So my hat's off to all these people that are doing these things and making a change in their lives and making a change of numbers of other youth life. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions I can as expeditiously as possible. Please give us a call at area code 310-337-1169. My name is Jerry Jones, and you have a blessed and a good evening. Thank you very much.